Hello, this is Alan Wheeler on my YouTube channel where I've been talking about spirituality and tarot. Um, however, I've had a special request, as the title should indicate, to do a video on runes. Um, a viewer request from Spain, and as I was uh, trying to come up with topics and thinking about spiritual issues during the week, um, the idea of what is the good fight was on my mind. So I'm going to combine the two topics, runes and the question, what is the good fight? Before I get too much further, it's been my habit to introduce something from the altar and I think the newest addition, at least to my spiritual life, and I do leave this on the altar at night, is a bracelet of prayer beads. And um, you probably can't see here, but I have the Isis Oracle, and um, this is a uh, one of the cards from, from that deck that I put up here on the altar, and Isis is one of the deities uh, that I work with. And this has the key of life symbol associated with Isis, and tiger's eye beads associated with Sekhmet, the lion-headed fiery uh, goddess. And so um, I have been wearing this uh, daily. I've used it once uh, for meditation with a um, Isis chant. And so it's the newest addition to my spiritual life here. So uh, where to begin with the runes? Uh, Several, several years ago, maybe 2016, it could have been that long ago, um, through my interest in performing magic, I had uh, come across uh, several uh, divination uh, techniques, but I was a little wary of uh, tarot, so... I began with uh, the I Ching, uh, tossing coins and using the Book of Changes. Um, and I came across the runes, which also felt safe to me. So that was my initial uh, start. And I made, even before I ordered a set of runes, I made cards uh, using internet sources and drew all the runes out on a set of cards. Now, there in um, the runes are symbols drawn with straight lines. For those unfamiliar, um, I assume so they could be carved in stone or wood easily, uh, hence the straight lines. And the traditional uh, sets and diagrams I've seen arrange them in uh, three families of eight, um, or eights, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. And so originally I drew these all up and shuffled them and drew them and, and wrote uh, meanings on the back and used them as flashcards to learn the meanings of the runes. Eventually, I bought uh, a set of runes, and then for demonstrating in my classes and for performing uh, with the runes, I had an effect I performed with uh, runes. I actually, and I think in another video I showed these, um, and maybe I'll link it below if I, if I can find that, uh, but I made a set of uh, runes by buying stones in a craft store and painting the runes in red um, paint, 
on them and then uh, sp spraying over them with a gloss um, varnish. And uh, those are somewhat bigger than these. This is a recent set that I keep on the altar. I'll just draw one out to get us started. Oh, and this one is on Suze, which can mean the word or hearing uh, spirit, hearing the spirit. And we'll uh, get into that room uh, today because I think I'll be breaking this video up into three just so I can relax and um, present without rushing here <clears throat> and maybe do one of the families of rooms for each video. And what I'm uh, using for the exercise I'll do is this book by um, Olson called Runes for Transformation. And this is uh, one of the sources I used uh, to learn the runes. And it's very good. Um, it's got some good background information and exercises, uh, a few workbook style pages. But what I'm borrowing today is for practice, the author did a Footh Hark of Inanimate Objects. This is kind of a practice exercise for applying the runes. But he took, um, he called this the Footh Hark of a Boat. And basically he took the concept of boat and then applied every rune to it so that Fehu told the worth of a boat, and Uruz told the strength of a boat, and so on. And so that's the exercise I would like to apply to the question, what is the good fight? Uh, we hear fight the good fight. There's a television show called The Good Fight, somewhat ironically, I think, as it's about lawyers. And... Um, so what is the good fight? That's what I've lit the incense and created some sacred space here, lighting candles in order to tune into uh, the energy, perhaps of Odin. And so I'm going to play um, to keep me on track in... Uh, trying to access this energy of Odin, um, a song by Led Zeppelin called No Quarter. And uh, it's um, somewhat reminiscent of warriors uh, going out in the cold environment. So um, Alexa, continue music. And there we go. Okay. So, without further ado, what is the good fight? And so let's look at um, the runes one by one. And we'll start with the first eight in that first family, or eight, of uh, runes from the elder, from the elder Futhark. And this rune is Fehu which means wealth or worth. And it looks almost like the horn on a, a cattle. Is that music distracting? Alexa, volume down. Maybe that's better. And uh, it reminds me of the of cattle, which was wealth in the time, uh, of course, of the, the Norse when the runes were um, first used. So crops, cattle, and those kind of things would have been the wealth of the age. Now I associate um, Fehu with Freya, uh, who I keep a image of Freya up here right by Odin here on the altar. 
um, who is something like the Empress in tarot. So here's the Empress from the Smith Waite Centennial uh, Tarot. And so this this room speaks to me that the um, when we answer what is the good fight, we should think about what is the worthy fight, what is the fight fight worth fighting. Um, that would be the good fight. So I think that um, this is, you know, the fight of uh, for justice, the fight for uh, humanity, perhaps rather than uh, the self. And uh, I think of how we, you know, in the rat race, we may fight for job positions or titles. Um, we may fight for uh, first place in the grocery line and whatnot. But the good fight is um, the fight that's worth fighting. And ultimately, I would say that's the, the, the real battle is love um, or, or the highest good, um, which is very idealistic, but to fight for the good of all people. And so uh, Odin, who is... Um, traditionally looked at as a warrior, or the Morrigan, who um, I may be becoming a child of the Morrigan, step by step. Um, they are known as battle deity. And that is uh, battles that goes beyond, um, may include soldiers, who are in, involved in just wars, um, as there's traditions of the just war in, in the Bhagavad Gita um, from the Hindu tradition. Um, Augustine in the Christian tradition championed the idea of the just war, but could include uh, firefighters and uh, doctors who are fighting the coronavirus, or um, teachers like me who uh, choose to work with uh, disadvantaged uh, students rather than the elite and rich students. So uh, I think there's many kinds of battle. Um, if you're that the a person called to that, it could include um, social justice or other good causes. So that's the worthy uh, battle. At the same time, um, I, not only the Empress, but I associate this worth with the nine of coins or the nine of pentacles. And this is, here the focus is more on the individual in this um, pictured here in her own garden uh, with her bird and her lavish robes as if she's enjoying the fruit of her labor. And I think the, the good fight is one that's also rewarding to us, one that matches our skills, um, our particular calling, uh, whatever that might be. And so I think um, Confucius talked about the efficient action in which um, we can achieve a balance where we are doing what we want to as an individual. What seems good to us, good for us, can, it can at the same time benefit the nation or benefit humanity. So as a balance to what is the good fight, um, I want to bring in that card and not neglect the individual value that comes with that. The second rune in this family is Uruz. And this is the wild ox uh, represented here. And 
It traditionally stands for strength, and it kind of looks to me like a horn, um, and uh, sometimes horns are representative of that strength, that primal force, um, that our horn is lifted up uh, when we are victorious, and so on. So, from the Archeon Tarot, and there's some tarot, deck, tarot decks that, um, if this is, if you can make this out, it shows a atlas like muscle man next to the lion. And so some tarot decks do display the outward concept of strength, um, which certainly the wild ox can uh, certainly contain that meaning. But many tarot decks focus on the inner strength um, that we see here, where the lion, the strength of the lion is actually tamed by a greater strength. And so it reminds me that the in the good fight, sometimes our strength comes from something uh, beyond ourselves. And it may be the strength that comes from integrity, from choosing to do what's right, uh, to choosing to fight the worthy battle. Um, those of a more supernatural bent um, would consider being filled with the Spirit and being filled with energy from uh, another source, which... Um, May, be, may or may not be scientifically explained. And so um, this is uh, a question to think about, but very important to warriors, strength. And where does our strength come from? And how do we replenish our strength? The next card is Thurisaz. And it looks like a thorn here. And this could be a offensive weapon, I believe, like Thor's hammer. Um, this rune is, I believe it's associated with Thor. Um, or it could be a hedge of uh, protection, as uh, thorn bushes often were. Or it could be uh, that obstacle that we can't get through, those briars and those thorny problems that we, we face. The card that came to mind for me was the Five of Swords, um, just because it features that win-lose battle and that feeling of loss um, if we read the card from the perspective of these figures, of course, uh, here's the victorious one if we read from the perspective of this figure, but it's the kind of um, battle where there are winners and losers and the zero-sum game that we sometimes face and maybe the obstacles um, and we must decide, is it time to retreat or time to push forward and overcome those thorny problems? A phrase that I've sometimes heard used with this card is grasp the rose. And it reminds me of Tarot of Vampires. Here's the five of knives in Tarot of Vampires. And you see this dark figure hovering over um, the innocent, uh, it's like resting or sleeping figure here, but she is surrounded by roses. And uh, we could take a lot of time to interpret the card, uh, but the with the light and darkness, uh, the meaning's similar, 
to the traditional Five of Swords in Tarot. But I picked this card from the Tarot of Vampires because roses figure prominently in many cards in the deck. In fact, the back of the deck shows the thorns and thistles, and amongst them is the beautiful blooming rose. So, um, to me, this exemplifies the good fight, that there's both reward and uh, difficulty uh, to face. And this rune uh, brings that in. Uh, the next rune is the one I drew at the beginning, Ansu's. And it reminds me of an antenna in the old days when we used those for the television sets. Uh, and it can mean oracle, words, signs, wisdom. And um, it's associated with uh, Odin, um, which is... pertinent is uh, relevant <laughs> for this reading uh, here today. Uh, Odin hung on the world tree for nine days to bring the runes uh, to humanity. And so here's the hanged man. And uh, of course, he's in suspension having his paradigm shift. And I think this is the experience not only Odin, but we often have when we come to a new realization, a new understanding, or hear the words we need to hear. We have to silence ourselves and suspend ourselves a bit, um, be willing to change course. The other card, um, also associated with Odin for me, who wandered like Gandalf in disguise. And here's the hermit uh, shining his light, and it's associated with that white beard with wisdom and soul journeys. And so the good fight um, is not just a physical one. But it's hearing that word of spirit, having the right heart in the right direction, um, waiting for the right moments, and fighting the right fights. So very important uh, to me. Um, and I'm glad we actually drew that one for our kind of signature rune for... Uh, this video. The next rune in this family is Raid Ho. It means ride or road. Um, and uh, I think of the um, warriors riding horses, perhaps. And it uh, brings in uh, the chariot card as there can be uh, progress and control needed to stay on that narrow path and to find that right road. Um, it can be the guidance um, that we receive or having our steps ordered, um, not turning to the left or right. And the, the song playing in the background is talking about these uh, Vikings, I think. Uh, going out um, to carry news that must get through. And they're going on that path that no one knows. So, uh, the right, finding the right path, the right way, um, Raid Ho. The next rune is Kanaz. 
It can mean torch um, and fire. And in other um, interpretations, it can mean pain or ulcer. And I think it's just two sides of the same energy. So it reminds me of the Ace of Wands. And whether it's a, a new spark, that energy that's needed for battle, or whether it's the, the torch leading the way, uh, the fire in the bones that we feel, that we, that we must feel, like Odin's shamanic uh, frenzy, battle frenzy, um, that light in the darkness. Um, likewise, when we're driven and we don't pause, it can become an ulcer, right? It can be, uh, become painful. Uh, when it's burning out of control. So I think both possibilities are under that umbrella of meaning for Kanaz. Very important as we consider the good fight. Two more. Uh, one is Gebo, and it means gift. It can mean partners um, or exchange. And so, the two cards that I've picked out uh, to represent this rune are the Six of Coins, or Pentacles, and the Six of Cups. But we see this giving, this innocent giving going on here. We even see an X here on the banner in the background. Here we see the balance of the scales as there's a exchange going on and it could be generosity it could be fair um, inclusion um, of others but that balance of the six um, is here and so uh, for me this gabo can mean covenant and the contract that a soldier might have or a warrior might have, the agreement um, that's needed, um, a kind of alliance that may be there for the good fight. Whether in my case that's um, with a deity or humanity, um, it could be applied in, in uh, other ways as well. Finally, we'll end with Wunjo, which means joy and victory. It almost looks like a victory flag waving in the wind. I'll associate that with the happy ending of the Ten of Cups. And we see the figure's arms raised in joy there. But that new song, um, that rising up of, of the heart, that comes when there is success and when we actually conquer, uh, whether it's a battle with cancer or battling an addiction, uh, whatever that good fight is, we can look forward to this victory. So I will stop here. Um, I hope that you will have um, find connection in uh, people in your life and online community and on your spiritual path, uh, whatever that might be. Thank you for watching.